Hello everyone, in this video I will be explaining five pretty interesting backrooms levels that you've probably never heard of. These levels are brand new, never before seen on this channel, actually never before seen by anybody's eyes, until now of course. I thought it'd be pretty cool to throw together a video like this, I haven't done something like this in a while actually, so if you do enjoy, leave a like, I'd really appreciate it. Watch till the end of the video to hear a little secret about how I got access to these levels, and without further ado, let's get into these five interesting spooky backrooms levels that you've never heard of shall we backrooms level 0.67 level 0.67 also known as the cold lobby is classified as a class dead zone rating and is just a very bad time overall what a way to start out the video, the dead zone rating, my favorite. This level is a sub-level that takes place in between level zero and one, but you won't find it on the list of sub-levels on the Wikidot, and I had no clue it existed until making this video. Anyways, the layout and the design of this level is quite similar to what you'd see in level zero. The colors are kind of the same, the designs and the walls are kind of the same, but the main difference is that those walls and overall spatial layout here is constantly shifting and reorienting itself, which pretty much just means the walls are glitching around. This makes the level have an unstable and corrupted appearance to those that come here. This corruption makes it really difficult to walk around because you can't just touch something that's glitching, or else you'll glitch through it. On top of the glitchy atmosphere and the walls constantly no-clipping around, the level itself is very, very cold. Like, you can't even stay inside of it at all because it's estimated to be negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit. As of right now, there are three known cycles to this level that it goes through, and all of these will affect how you explore or survive it. Those cycles are the stationary period, the active period, and the twilight zone. The stationary period is exactly what it sounds like. These are very short periods or breaks that last about three to five seconds when everything stops moving. The walls no longer glitch, there's nothing shifting, there's no more anomalies. For three to five seconds, it's just completely still and everything's normal. These normal periods happen at random intervals and they cannot be guessed or timed or, or charted or anything. They're just random. The active period is, of course, when all the walls are jutting and glitching and moving around haphazardly in these random patterns. Essentially, it's when the level is in its glitchy state. To this day, no one knows what causes these glitches or how people figured out what they do, but it is very dangerous to interact with, especially the walls when this happens, because touching one of these glitchy walls might cause you to clip inside or mess up your own bodily geometry somehow. The Twilight Zone is the final and most enigmatic zone in this level. It's not really a cycle, it's more of a location inside of the sublevel, and it takes the appearance of a very large pitch black vacuum-like area where every piece of light is absorbed. So the light from the main parts of the area does not seep in here, and the flashlights that you bring or anything else will not work. It's just Vanta black everywhere. And this darkness effect is actually only visible once you get inside the region. So it's not like you can see it from far away and avoid it. You kind of just accidentally walk inside and then you'll know you're in there. But if you do find yourself wandering into the twilight zone, you need to turn around and walk the other direction as quickly as you can to try to find the way you found it. Just like I said, the light from the regular area disappears the second you enter a twilight zone, so the only way you can get out is if you just take the exact steps you just took, but the exact opposite way. If you continue to walk straight and try to feel around, you will undoubtedly get lost and become consumed by the darkness. Or rather, what lurks inside of the darkness. Because as for the creatures in this sublevel, there is one, and it is one that you should definitely know about. It's nicknamed the Lurker, and other than this sublevel, there have been no sightings of it anywhere. It's just here. The Lurker lives and hides in the Twilight Zone, and because of this, only small glimpses or touches of the entity have been seen. It is said to be a four-legged creature with a rough height of seven feet tall. There are no defining features to its face that you can really tell other than a gap where a mouth is. The entity is passive to wanderers inside of the Twilight Zone, and it doesn't attack you inside there, but trust me, that doesn't mean it's safe. It's not at all safe. When the level goes through one of its stationary periods, when the walls stop moving and everything stops glitching, this is when the Lurker entity hunts. If you're outside the Twilight Zone in one of the stationary periods for those few seconds, the Lurker will sense you from 
anywhere on the level and it will run after you and chase you at an inhumanly fast pace to consume you. Essentially, it moves so fast that there's no way you can protect yourself from it. Even though there's only three to five seconds of stationary time, the entity will incapacitate you and drag your body back to the twilight zone during that five seconds, meaning it runs at several hundred miles per hour. There's really nothing you can do if the entity senses you, so in order for it not to, just try to make little to no noise, because that seems to be how it hunts. So yeah, that's pretty fun, I'd say. To enter this level, you have to follow these instructions exactly. And you have to do so by entering a vent on level zero, crawl forward for an unknown amount of time, and at some point, the vent will get very cold. It'll feel like air conditioning is blowing on you. Once this coldness happens, you have to crawl back the way you came for about half a mile, and at that point, you will no-clip into a single room with two doors. One door is labeled hot, one door is labeled cold. Choosing the cold door will take you to this corrupted, strange level. If you do not complete those steps, or if you do them in the wrong order, you'll probably just get sent to a random level. To exit this sublevel, you have to no clip through a wall while the level is in a stationary period and when those walls stop moving. But again, you have to hurry to do this because you have to outrun and outmaneuver the lurker entity before the level goes back to its glitchiness again. And if you do all that and somehow avoid it, you might be safe and you might escape. This level was very strange. It seems to be the home of a very unique and very rare backrooms creature. And I gotta say, I would never in my right mind come here. So I don't think you should either. Level 103. Level 103 of the backrooms has been given a class three difficulty due to how hard its environment is to live in. There aren't any entities here or anything, which is nice, but it doesn't really matter when I tell you how bad the effects of this level are. You see, level 103 is a large grid-like plane that is green and black in coloration, and it expands out infinitely in all directions. It looks like an early 3D software program on an old computer, and that is exactly why it's dangerous, because the level actually has the ability to generate 3D spaces that replicate other backrooms levels or real life places almost exactly to a T. It's kind of like a live VR experience. Oftentimes, when wanderers find themselves inside this level and they can't escape, they walk into a 3D generated space this level created, and the wanderer actually thinks they made it out. They think they left, they think they're in a different level, when in reality, it's just a generated fake version from this level. Due to this, a high number of people have entered here and never escaped. The majority of the level is just the large green and black plane though, and you might actually only encounter a false render while you're trying to exit the level. Besides the flat plane though, there are some deformities in the ground. There are several small hills and bumps located in different spots, and these can actually be pretty dangerous if you fall down because you could break your ankle or something. In the very middle of this entire level, there is a large void-like structure that cascades downwards into a shadow. It's believed that this area is the only true exit to the level and the only way out. Because as far as we know, this entire level exists as a trap. One that you can enter, but you can't really leave. But it's more sinister than that because of how realistic the 3D renders appear to be. Especially to somebody who's like dehydrated or has been wandering for a long time, you might think these renders are real. It's unknown how to enter and how to exit this level, so if you wind up here at all, just try to jump in that void in the middle to be sent out, and don't fall for the fake realities. Level 188.1. Level 188.1 has been given a class PSI difficulty due to several severe mental hazards and illnesses that you might get while exploring the level, as well as for having a corrupted layout. Now, the level 188 might sound familiar to you, and that's because it's the hotel level, the famous courtyard and windows. But this level is a sub-level, of course. It's level 188.1. This area looks very similar to its parent level, save for a couple of design choices. Mainly being that the entire area, the hallways, the courtyard, the windows, all of them are decorated in a retro Baroque style architecture. Essentially, everything in the sub-level is 20 times as fancy as the main level. There's things like wooden window frames, high ceilings, crown moldings, intricate carvings, large spiral staircases, and paintings, and all of that is scattered around this level and its various hallways. 
hallways. Walking through these hallways can actually give wanderers strange effects that I mentioned earlier in the beginning of this. These effects can show themselves in many ways, but specifically and most commonly, they are in the form of severe mental illness. Things like amnesia or dementia are very common for everyone to experience if they stay here for too long. And you might be asking yourself brutally, how does a healthy young person or anybody just get dementia from being somewhere? Well, after about a week of exploring this level or being lost in it rather, every explorer will begin to fall ill. They'll experience sweating and fever and headaches and fatigue. And these symptoms usually just get worse and worse the longer you stay in these hallways. And then eventually you'll begin to lose your memory and your critical thinking ability and your sight and your hearing and all your senses. Obviously the symptoms start slowly and you won't even notice them at first, but the second you do feel a symptom, you need to escape before those other ones start. That way you don't get stuck in this level wandering forever without your mind. Entering the level is easy. You can just find a door on level 188 that has classical music playing from behind it, open it up, and walk in here. Once you do that though, and once you close the door, the entrance goes away, so you can't go back. And that's why exiting the sublevel is a whole nother story. It's very difficult because you have to find a randomly appearing metal gray door, open it up, and you'll be sent back to level 188. However, that's very hard because, like I said, this level is designed classically. There's no metal doors, so if you see one, it's very very rare. But just walking around this level for weeks at a time and getting lost in the infinite labyrinth of hallways behind the courtyard and having your brain lose itself and amnesia set on, it just makes the entire thing more difficult and honestly just not fun at all. Level 102. Level 102, or the Freshwater Abyss, has been given a class 1 difficulty and is the first kinda safe level in the video. The level is assumed to be an infinite concrete water reservoir structure that's similar to those of real life. The water inside is safe to consume, but it is not almond water, and it goes down very deep below your feet. This level is said to look very similar to the real life water storage reservoir from Germany in Munich. So this this can lead some people to believe that they're actually back in reality when they see this level because it just looks so similar. Anyway, swimming inside this level is very important because that's the only way you can move around and travel. Make sure that you can actually swim before you try to explore this level because the water is very deep and you cannot see the bottom. Lighting in this level is also pretty scarce and most of the time you'll be exploring, it'll be dark unless you bring light with you. There are several tunnels that lead off from this main reservoir area and these lead back to smaller reservoirs of water in their own rights. These smaller spaces are much older, much more decayed, and they fill people that go there with paranoia. They're typically more claustrophobic and made out of bricks and more corrosive ingredients. Overall, it's just a more harsh environment in these back reservoirs. These places are also breeding grounds for the wretched cycle, so be careful not to get lost in the labyrinth of little tunnels because you might turn into a wretch if you do. Clumps are also pretty common back here as well, but if you avoid these back halls and back reservoirs, then you should be pretty good. The main reservoir has no entities. To enter this level, you can no clip through the floor on level 8.1, and to exit, you can no clip into a pillar inside of the main part of the reservoir to get sent out to level 30. This level's cool if you kind of want to go to a safe level and relax in kind of a sensory deprivation chamber, or if you just want to get a nice drink of water or explore some water stuff. That doesn't make much sense, but you get what I'm saying. Level something's in the grass. This is the final level for the video, and it has been given a class 5 difficulty rating due to it being unsafe and unstable with a dangerous creature or two that might be lurking around. This level is mainly made up of many fields of grass or wheat that repeat forever. The first field you'll see is likely going to be a wheat field with a small windmill in the front of it. When you wake up to find yourself on this level and you see that windmill, you'll begin to take in your surroundings. You really can't see anything but wheat and the windmill. But after walking closer and closer to that windmill, you'll begin to hear strange screeching noises and screaming coming from seemingly under the ground. But moving past the wheat field and continuing to walk in a straight direction, you'll begin to find other types of fields. The next one you might run into is a grass field. This grass field typically has a darker ambience and just a darker mood. The sky here is grayer, the wind is cool and almost cold, the grass is darker, and there's only really one thing in this area that you might find, and that is a decaying farmhouse. The exterior and the interior of this farmhouse is all in a collapsing state. 
all the rooms inside are torn up and old, and the outside itself is not much better. Near this house is actually the entrance to a cave mining area that also looks to be abandoned and old. Going down this entrance will open up this labyrinth of hallways and tunnels and caves that you really can't tell is there from above until you find this entrance. This labyrinth seems to run underneath the entire field and all of the fields that I've talked about. Different anomalies are very common here, like broken wooden stairs, old mine shafts, dripping water, random pools of water too, and this cave is also home to rare instances of smilers. But it's between this cave and the field above where a strange entity lives. This entity has been nicknamed the Consumer. The creature itself is not fast, as it has no legs, but it takes the appearance of a large slug-like entity that drags itself around the level with two two long front arms and skinny bony hands. It's said that the entity looks slimy and dirty and it reeks of rot and decay. And it is in fact what makes that screeching noise by the way that I mentioned earlier. The entity is not very fast like I said though because it doesn't have any legs and it drags itself around, but the way it hunts is terrifying. The consumer will burrow itself in the dirt to sleep or hunt, and then once a wanderer or something walks above it in the dirt, its long arm and bony hand will reach out, grab whatever that is, and drag them under the ground in the dirt to consume them. It's impossible to tell where this entity is hiding under the ground, so you really have to watch every step you take and not make too much noise because it senses you through your vibrations. And if you do get grabbed by the leg or whatever by the consumer and it starts dragging you under, the likelihood is you're not making it out alive. To enter this level, you have to no clip through the grass on level 45, and to exit, you actually have to find that house that I mentioned, the one that's falling down, you have to enter through one of its broken windows, and then no clip through its stairs to be sent out of the level. And trust me, I would literally get out as fast as I could, because you risk getting, you know, consumed or pulled under the ground the longer you're here. And I'm not trying to get eaten by a giant slug with no legs. Alright, those are five dangerous backrooms levels that you've never heard of. And I told you in the intro that if you stay till the end, I had a little secret to tell you of how I got these. And that secret is, these levels are all fan-made. These are fan-made levels that you submitted to me over on Discord. Or rather, the people that submitted them did. They're in the description below, by the way. That's right, though. I am bringing these series back from two years ago, the Fan Made Level series. If you're new here, this is where I go over levels or entities that you all created and submitted to me over on my Discord. The link to the Discord will be below if you want to participate in the Fan Made Level series. I cannot say how often I'll do this series, but I did think I'd bring it back for now, at least temporarily. If you do want more episodes, leave a like so I can actually tell and leave a comment below. Let me know if I should continue to do it. I know a lot of you have been asking for this back, but I'm not sure how it'll be received now since it's two years later. So if you do enjoy, like I said, please leave a like and please comment that you actually enjoyed it. And again, if you want to submit your own level or your own entity, head over to my Discord in the description below to do so. The rules and stuff are all over there for you to check out. With all that said, thank you so much for watching. I love and appreciate each and every one of you, and I will see you uh, in the next video, I guess. Peace.